This is a review of my Stiga Park Pro 540iX, uh, a lawnmower I bought last year, uh, which is over-specified for my domestic garden because it's capable of this kind of estate work. It's, it's a professional machine. It's also a strimmer and will cut down uh, weeds uh, with ease and it's also a brush cutter and can be used with the deck raised to cut down nettles and undergrowth and it's also a scythe with the deck raised as well so you can use it for clearing all sorts of unwanted rubbish from the garden. It's also a leaf shredder in fact it can reduce leaves to invisible shreds and I call it a gazunda because it's got this out front deck which goes underneath benches and fences and hedges and shrubs. It's also got a, a rake, a hydraulic rake, which is very useful. In fact, it's got two, as I'll show you later. This enables it to scarify the lawn and also uh, to rake uh, gravel. Um, uh, it grades my large gravel driveway much more easily than doing it by hand. It comes with a combi cart, or mine does as well, which is very useful. You can attach it without removing the rake, which is very convenient. This professional Honda engine delivers 21 and a half horsepower. So this is the top of the range Steger machine and will do anything. You can add any Steger tool to it. And here are a few from their website. Yes, not much call for a snow thrower here in the south, but you never know. Anyway, you can see this is a workhorse, a real professional tool, and I wouldn't be without it even though it's very over-specified for my little garden. But here we are, I will show you around and you can make your own mind up. I've got my home video followed by Steger's own video, which is much better quality. This is my lawn, or part of it and it's uh, I'm not very proud of it it's terribly bumpy thanks to moles which invade me every year and which I'm not allowed to gas or to blow up so I have to live with them consequently any mower has a very bumpy ride on my grass except this one because this one has hydraulic air suspension on the driver's seat which is adjustable depending on the weight of the driver and it makes for an extremely comfortable floaty ride even on my switchback of a lawn so from that point of view alone I can't recommend this machine highly enough this is of course an out front mulching mower and if you're familiar with mulching mowers you don't need me to tell you that it they're the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, you won't see any grass clippings in this video. And that's because this grass, which is about an inch, inch and a half long, is pulverized into particles so small that they simply fall down to the bottom of the sward, to the roots of the plant, where they eventually break down and fertilize the lawn. And for that reason, I think I have green, lush grass all year round, even in a hot, dry summer. So I think the mulching action is very beneficial to the grass. It helps if you cut it when it's dry rather than when it's wet. And it helps if you don't leave the grass too long because it copes best 
with grass of up to about inch and a half, two inches, and higher than that, then you you might see some grass clippings not drop to the bottom. But as I'm demonstrating here, the grass clippings completely disappear. And you won't even walk them into the house. So it's a wonderful system. Uh, more than that, when you get to a certain age, there's no grass bag to empty. Um, with a lawn of my size, I'd have to empty the grass bag 50 times. And that can be hard work. So, who wouldn't want a marching mower? I don't know. It's, uh, it's a wonderful cutting method. This machine has an electric deck. This is uh, operated from the uh, dashboard, as you can see I'm doing. Lifts the deck up, which is useful for going over gravel or off, uh, on road. Uh, it's also useful, as I'll show you later, for cutting tall weeds and undergrowth. Um, and my machine has a rake at the back. It doesn't come standard like that. I have added the mechanism at the back, which is Steger's electric tool lift um, and a rake. So I can use the rake on the lawn to scarify it if I want to. It's also very good for flattening mole hills, which is particularly relevant to me. And it's got many other applications too, as I'll show you shortly. Uh, the rake is also controlled from the dashboard, so you don't have to get off the mower or even stop mowing. You can use the rake at the same time as you're mowing and um, the only downside to having it permanently attached to the back of the mower as I have it is that you have to remember it's there um, when you're reversing otherwise it doesn't get in the way at all uh, you can take it off and uh, I I'll show you later how to do that but I find it so useful and I use it almost every time I use the mower that it's easier to leave it permanently attached. And I can also uh, attach the combi cart. As you can see from the tow bar at the back there, I can attach a cart to the mower without removing the rake. So everything is fits neatly together uh, with a minimum of effort. So I'm showing you around the mower here, and it's... Uh, Steger's finest, top of the range, or virtually, certainly top of the range, uh, Park Pro models, and it's, uh, well, the best part of 10 grand, I suppose, but uh, for me, it's worth it. This is the deck, it's 105 centimetres wide, and it's electric, which means it can be lifted up from the dashboard. There's a handy headlight for those who like to mow in the dark and it comes on automatically when it gets dark as well. The, hen the Honda engine is a remarkable thing, as I'll show you later. That switch turns the fuel on and off. Here is the, here is the fuel tank, which is transparent, and the filler cap, which is nice and wide, so you can easily pour unleaded fuel straight in. That metal bar running around the back of the mower is basically a carriage rack should you want to throw a bag of compost on there or anything else that you want to cart around without getting out the towing cart. Here's the hood which uh, covers up the mower and the, the engine and the oil and I'll show you later how to get in there and what's underneath. That's the brake pedal on the left and the accelerator on the right. Showing you the seat adjustments here and the, the cushion underneath it. Um, the seat adjusts laterally as well as for load and you can see that it's a nice uh, springy uh, 
padding, which uh, adds to the comfort, and the armrests can be lifted or lowered to suit. The brake um, is released just by putting your foot on it, and on the other side is the accelerator, which is it's one one pedal for forward and backwards. So you use your toe to go forward and your heel to go backwards. And uh, that's hydrost hydrostatic, they call that, and it couldn't be easier. Here's the uh, display, which features some useful data, including the temperature and whether the park brake is on, the revolutions of the blade, the battery voltage, and the hours that the machine has been in use. Mine, at this point, has been in use about 20 hours. Articulated steering means the mower has a very tight turning circle, and uh, split differential means that the tyres won't scuff even in damp conditions. This is the lever for raising and lowering the deck. This is the height of cut gauge, um, which is the only way you know what height you've set the deck at. Uh, you adjust the height from a button on the dashboard, uh, so you don't have to get off the mower. First of all, I'm starting the engine. Foot down on the brake, start the engine with a single push. That's the throttle, so fast push it forward to get maximum revs. Now I'm adjusting the cutting height from the button on the dashboard and you'll see that arrow sliding backwards to point to the height of cut which is set today at 3. This is being filmed in early May of 2016 so I'll keep the cutting height at this level until we get to July when we can cut the grass as short as we like. Here you can see me adjusting the rake, which is also done from the dashboard. And um, the yellow button engages the blades. Now we've got the blades working. The throttle is forward. And the foot, I'll demonstrate here, forwards and backwards. Forwards with the front part of the foot. And back with the heel. This is particularly convenient if you're cutting under a shrub and you've pushed the deck under some branches or foliage, uh, you don't have to change pedals to get out. Sometimes you get in and it's quite difficult to move your foot, so you don't have to. As you may see, I sometimes steer with just one finger, thanks to uh, what Steger call hydraulic hydro-piston power steering don't know much about that but it is wonderfully light to maneuver. We're also picking up catkins on the lawn which have fallen down and um, we can also pick up leaves in the autumn which beats getting a hand rake out I can tell you. When I say pick up they get pulverized they fall to the bottom of the grass roots as well and disappear completely. The combi deck means you can easily switch from bioclip mulching into conventional rear discharge of the grass clippings but who in their right mind would choose to do that? I'm not sure. Mulch, mulch, mulch. In fact my preference for going at about half speed is good for the mulching action because that works better at, at slower speeds. This gives the blades plenty of time to cut the clippings many times under the deck before they fall to earth. 
and I'm trying to find some grass clippings here on the lawn to show you, but I can't. It's, they've been magically hoovered up, but they haven't. Nobody's collected them. Nobody's running behind me with a Dyson. It really is remarkable. Honda developed this uh, twin cylinder motor engine for commercial use and it's remarkably quiet. In fact, even with the blades engaged, this mower is surprisingly quiet. Reversing on this mower, and in fact on all Steger mowers, is very intuitive because as long as you don't change the steering wheel, the mower will reverse back along exactly the same path as it went in the forward motion, so uh, you don't have to worry about bumping into anything, uh, as you do with some mowers, where you have to keep looking over your shoulder and the mower doesn't automatically follow the same path backwards as it did forwards. I think we're going to go diving under this shrub up here to show you how far under we can get. Now that's quite difficult with any other kind of ride on. I mean, you could get under there with a with a fly mower, I suppose. And as you can see, my garden is bordered by conifers, uh, all of which have weeds growing at their base. And uh, this is marvellous for keeping them tidy. We have four-wheel drive, of course, and big 17-inch wheels. So this mower will handle all kinds of terrain and never stop never leave skid marks on the door. You'll have noticed me driving around like a demented goat. Normally I do drive in straight lines when there's no video camera, but the result isn't bad. Ah, now we're down in the elephant's graveyard where the grass is longer and it's damper too. Uh, we don't come down here without a compass or a flare. Um, but as you can see, the deck out front is essential to keep the place tidy. And it also allows us to precision navigate around obstacles like the compost bin here. And I can lift it up with the blades running to tackle the nettles get a lot of nettles here, so it really is extremely useful. The twin metal blades rotate at over 3000 RPM, so they're very powerful, and I always make sure that pets and children are far away. Now here's the rake on my gravel driveway, and you can see that it's a godsend. The alternative is hours of back-breaking work with a hand rake, and uh, this does the job in minutes, even on a large gravel driveway. And yes, it pulls out the weeds too. I in fact have two rakes. One is heavier duty, as I'll show you later, for deep scarifying or for heavier grade of gravel. But this one does fine for most of my uses. It will also collect uh, clippings of hedge trimmings, uh, leaves or fallen fruit, twigs, stones from the lawn, flattened molehills, as I said, and many other things as well. It's uh, a valuable ally in the constant battle out there. Now I'm going to get Dan to show you how to attach and remove the rake and the lift on the back of the mower.
simple as pull the lid back and pull out. Right. We'll only go in one way because the grommet's inside there. Okay. So that's relatively straightforward. Okay, and then with the R clips, pull the R clips out. Safe. And what you do is grab the back of the weight, just lift it up slightly, just take the weight off the pin. They will drop out. Right. Once they've dropped out, two hands on drop. That seems quite easy when you do it. Spin those out of the way. A screwdriver with your thumb if you can. Yep. Just spin those out until they eject up. Yep. Catch up. That way. Very good. Okay. And uh, now the switch to turn off the battery. So it's on this side. Okay, so this is your main main power cutoff. So that would be off, and you can take the key out. So you can test it from theft by taking it out. Essentially, if they haven't got that key, they're not going to start it up. Okay. Right. We'll only go in one way as well. So find which way it goes in, and then turn. I'm going to beep to let you know Very power's good. back on. Okay. While you're here, just visual check. All your oil is down on this side, so you can just visually check, make sure you've got no oil leaks, and again for your fuel sediment filter there. Yeah. Make sure it's all clear and free of debris. I can lift that one finger, it's really light. Okay. So what you want to do is just remove the clips and the washer. Yeah. This side drop. Same again this side. And the washer. And let it drop. Remove this carabiner. And then, okay. And then from here, you can roll it up and click on. Gotcha. Okay. And gives you fairly good, good access to the deck. Very good. Go either side of that. Okay. Pin goes through, and then this can go on. Okay. Easy. That will pull it out of the way. Then it can sit. Well, somebody's still got to get off the machine to dip it. Yeah. But yeah. 